This week we're staying at Dead Horse Ranch State Park in Cottonwood, Arizona. This is a very difficult state park to get a reservation to and we were lucky to get two days here so we have to make the most of it. So come on and check out the park with us. Get onto Route 60, head over to Interstate 17, and take that up to Cottonwood, Arizona, where we're going to be staying at Dead Horse Ranch State Park. We've heard a lot about this place and have been looking forward to our stay here for quite a while. Hi everybody, I'm Randy. Diane will be joining us in a little bit and we are Zephyr Travels. This week we are staying for a couple of nights at Dead Horse Ranch State Park. And it is in Cottonwood, Arizona, which is kind of between Jerome, Arizona and Sedona. Now we were in this area earlier this year, actually end of last year in November. We stayed at a private campground. This time we're staying at the state park and we've heard a lot about this park and wanted to stay here. It was very difficult to get a reservation and that's why we're only here for two nights. It is very, very popular. They have about 125 sites. They are all fully developed with electric and water, no sewer, but there is a dump station on the way in and out. The one thing I would say about the sites is they're not real private, though they're roomy. There's not a lot of growth between you and the site next door. It looks like some of the growth will fill in. Of course, we're here in, in February, and some of the growth, growth will fill in during the summer when leaves get on some of the bushes and such here. But they are a little bit open. Our site is not too bad. We do have some nice large trees around it, which helps. But it is going to be fairly sunny, and if you're here during the late spring or summer months, you probably find this park to be a little on the warm side. It is very, very scenic though. Um, you've got the mountains kind of surrounding the park. There's actually a little bit of snow up on the mountains that you can see from here. Um, very, very nice. And the big draw to this is the location. Being here near Cottonwood and Sedona is a big draw for this area. A lot of people like to go into Sedona and this is the closest state park with camping to Sedona. This area is just noted for hiking, whether through the park here or outside of the park. There are plenty of places to go hiking between here and Sedona. We, we enjoyed it and we picked this place because we, we wanted to explore Cottonwood a little bit more and that's what we did. We got our bikes out and we rode our bikes into Cottonwood and wanted to check out the, the town and in our riding around, we had seen a sign that says Old Cottonwood, so we decided we had to go over and check that area out, which is more of an older western type town with a lot of more unique shops in it. And it's really a nice little town, a lot of real nice little restaurants. Well, let's show you some video.
something? Yep. What'd you find? A couple of place maps. Um, Coaster? Coaster that makes a match of place maps. Well, today we went out for a bike ride and we ended up in Old Cottonwood. Yeah, a neat little town. It's got a lot of different shops and restaurants and we went the wrong way. We went the other way because I saw a couple antique here, antique shops. So we did ride up that way and then we saw a sign for Old Cottonwood and it wasn't that far. So we took a ride down and yeah, it's discovered it's a neat little town. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of little old shops, restaurants and such. And not far from the campground, probably only about four miles, so easy bike ride. Well guys, you saw that correctly. Diane did crash her bike. It's been a few days since that happened. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Um, the worst injury I think I sustained was I did get a cut above my left eye. And right now that seems to be healing quite nicely. It did result in a, a little bit of swollenness and I do have a black eye, but and then I had a couple bruises and bumps. Yeah, your leg was sore for a little bit. Yeah, my leg is, was sore for a little bit, primarily in the knee area. And that's, that's really about it. So as bad as you may think it looked, actually the car probably saved me from sustaining more serious injuries. Yeah, the car actually kind of cushioned your blow and that you hit it at an angle, kind of landed on the car and then slid off of it. Mm -hmm. Where if you if the car wasn't there, you would have hit the curb and would have slammed into the sidewalk or even there was even a railing along there that you probably would have hit. So it would have been much worse. Yeah, I could have been injured much, much worse, like Randy said. So, you know, like I said, it, as bad as it may look to some of you, the car actually did save me from sustaining more uh, serious injuries. Right. And you you don't think that it's that the e-bikes are unsafe. You feel that they're they're still safe. It was just really maybe a little bit of a a user error type thing or Yeah, it was just a, you know, a fluky accident. I love my e-bike and I won't stop riding it and never considered selling it. You actually rode it back to the campground I after did. that. I did. You know, it takes a little while before uh, the pain of any bumps and bruises would set in. Or, you know, my eye did bleed, but fortunately I had some very nice, actually a very nice woman that came out and helped me. She got me some, you know. First uh, aid. First aid for my eye, ice, a uh, glass of water. She helped me get up. Well, there was a couple people there that, that yeah. did that. Yes. Right, right. And the people who owned the car were there, and they were very, very understanding. Yes, they were uh, They were super nice about it. I felt awful that I damaged their car. Fortunately, the damage did not appear to be too great, primarily located on the one uh, driver's side rear door. And... Um, and we've turned it into our insurance, and our insurance is working with them to make it right. So I think that will be okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just one of those fluky things that happened. And like Randy said, it probably, you know, was my error. And um, Yeah, and we'll talk more about that. 
Um, right. And we're kind of, I've got a theory on what I think happened. And I think it's good to share it, especially for other e-bike riders out there that might make the same error. Um, I wanted to go over what I think happened with Diana and her bike and why it just took off. One of the things that Diane typically does when she rides her bike is she sets the pedal assist to three, which is the middle adjustment. And when she went to get going, because these bikes are heavy, we've kind of gotten in the habit of hitting the throttle and adding a little power boost to that. And I think what happened for her was she hit the throttle, she pedaled at the same time, the assist kicked in and the throttle kicked in together and it gave her a lot more power than she thought she was going to have and the bike just took off and then there was a little bit of a panic because it's moving and she's a, you know worried of what's going to happen and she just didn't react to that situation now what she should have done is hit the brake obviously but the, for more than just the obvious reason of stopping the bike these bikes have a safety feature built into them that if you hit the brake while the motor is running, the motor will automatically shut off. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. I'm tilting the bike, and this is the front brake here. So I'm going to hit the throttle, and you can see the, the wheel is spinning. Hit the brake, and I've still got the throttle going, but the, the wheel is stopping, and or stopped spinning. I didn't brake the rear wheel, but I stopped the motor by hitting the front brake. And that will work no matter which brake you hit. It's a safety feature built into it. If the bike takes off, you just want to hit the brakes. If you feel uncomfortable, you're going, just hit the brakes. You don't have to jam on them. You can just hit them a little bit, you know, and the bike will just stop moving. The, the will stop being propelled. And then if you hit them a little bit more, the bike will stop moving on you. So that's what you should have done. You know, it's a learning experience. That's the way I always look at things. You know, we know what, we know what if we know what happened and what went wrong, we can prevent it from happening again by learning from it. Right. right. And by seeing this accident, I hope that it doesn't deter anybody thinking about buying an e-bike from buying it. Because like I say, this is the second e-bike I have. And I really, I like this one much better because it is the step-through model. for, And most women would really prefer a uh, style like this one. And that's why I got the second bike. If you learn nothing else from this video, the important thing I want to emphasize is that all bike riders, no matter if it's an e-bike, uh, you know, a small child's bike, whatever type of bike you're riding, you wear your helmet. It saved me from some more serious injuries, I'm sure. Yeah, so wear a helmet, make sure your helmet's in good condition, if it's damaged, cracked, or whatever, get a new helmet. These aren't that expensive, and it will save you a lot of injury. Yes. Yeah. But like I say, I would definitely, definitely recommend that anyone buying any or riding any type of bike wear a helmet. Yeah, that, that definitely saved you. I mean, we are guilty as anybody of you know jumping on our bikes and taking a short ride, not putting our helmets on. But a situation like that, you never know what's going to happen. She would have fallen at that speed and hit the pavement, you know, and not have a helmet on. It could have been a lot worse. She was lucky that she hit that car. Her movement to that car was very minimal. And most of the damage to her or injuries to her were from her sunglasses, scraping her eye, and the bike actually hitting her after she hit the car. So other than that, it, you know, it really wasn't that bad. It just looks terrible. Yes, it, it does look bad. And I have to say something about the bike. Um, after the accident, Randy and we looked at the bike, and it seemed so well built. There really wasn't any damage to the bike itself. The only thing it did is it moved one of the fenders. So as soon as Randy straightened it out, the bike was fine. There was no damage whatsoever. Not even scrapes on the paint or the finish itself yeah there's Nothing. hardly i don't think there's a scratch on the bike we haven't seen one yet no so they are extremely well built yeah they absolutely are right we hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give us a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel please subscribe to our channel zephyr travels 
Hit the bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis and we'd love to have you follow along. And if they're new here, what should they do? Leave us a comment. That's right. We'd love to hear from you. If you've had a, an issue with your e-bike or anything, let us know. You know, share it with the community. We all can learn together. Right. And like I said before, and I wanted to emphasize, I love my e-bike and I would not detour anybody. And I hope this video doesn't detour anybody from purchasing an e-bike or continue riding their e-bike. Right, right. We, we are going to continue to ride ours. We know that, you know, mistakes happen, but we learn from them, and we're going to continue enjoying our bikes for many years. Yes, yes, we will. So, all right, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Freeze warning. Dead Horse Ranch has been experiencing freezing temperatures at night. Please turn off your hydrant and disconnect your hose to avoid bursting our pipes. Thank you. And apparently here in this park, when it gets cold enough, cartoon penguins come out. Because everyone knows that the cartoon penguin is the national bird for Arizona.